All right, so as far as lectures go, let's start with what I already uploaded, the first theater lecture. It's titled in Blackboard. Um, I'm going to break my lecture on these slides up over a couple of videos so that they're more easy to digest and I'm not having to upload like, you know, an hour long video. All right, so it's theater appreciation. That's what class we're all in. Um, let's start with the word theater itself. So our word theater in English, in modern English, comes from two ancient sources, ancient Greek and ancient Latin. Uh, ancient Greek, theatron, and ancient Latin, theatrum. So what that means literally is place of viewing, right? So theater means place where you sit your butt down and watch something. That's what it literally means. Um, so our modern word theater comes from ancient Greek, theatron, and ancient Latin, theatrum, because we love Greek and Latin, or somebody used to at least. All right, so that usually leads into the next question, which is how you spell that word. So there are two spellings, right? T-H-E-A-T-E-R, which is the way that most people are more commonly used to seeing it, and T-H-E-A-T-R-E, -E, which is how you're going to see it used a lot this semester. As far as the difference between the two, both Spellings are correct, depending on your usage and what you mean by them. Uh, T-H-E-A-T-R-E, -E, the uncommon spelling, is usually used in reference to the art form of live performance, what we're going to be looking at and studying throughout the course of the semester, theater. That spelling also can refer to the venue, the location, where plays, live performances are performed at a theater. The more common spelling that most of us, I imagine, are more used to seeing, T-H-E-A-T-E-R, is usually used in reference to a location where films are shown, a movie theater. That's why we're more used to it. Um, that said, it is also sometimes used in reference to a location where plays can be performed. Plays can be performed at a theater spelled that way. So, what is the difference? Well, truthfully, there is no real difference between them, right? Um, the RE version, the ER version, it doesn't really matter. I mean, yes, there's a reason why, but it would take me like three or four hours and me giving you a crash course on English linguistics and how we speak a modified French since 1066 AD, which none of you really care about. So yeah, both spellings are technically correct and frequently are used interchangeably. I do not specifically care, but I will admit that I am an elitist cultural snob, so I tend to always use T-H-E-A-T-R-E, -E, which is usually used in spelling reference to the art form of live performance. So for this class, let me encourage you to embrace your elitist cultural snobbishness and do like me if you want to be cool like me. So that's the word. Uh, what does that mean? What is theater? Well, if you look at the notes, you can see that definition that theater is, quote, a collaborative form of fine art that uses live performers to present the experience of a real or imagined event before a live audience in a specific place, which answers all questions, I'm sure. We might as well shut the semester down because, yep, there you go, that's what it is, which I know makes sense to nobody. So here, as a way of trying to make that gobbledygook make sense to you, here's what that means. For theater to occur, right, for theater to be taking place, four things have to be going on at the same time. If one of the four elements isn't there, then it's not theater. So for theater to occur, you have to have element one, a live performance before a live audience. Theater is the art form of live performance. So a live performance, that's element one. Element two, you have performers who are performing in front of that live audience, usually actors. Element three, the actors are usually engaged in telling that live audience a story of some sort. That story can either be pre-scripted in advance, like, you know, a playwright writes a script and then the actors perform the lines, or uh, improvised, like in um, the Italian form Commedia dell'arte, or just in improv comedy, right? So a story either written out in advance or improv in front of the audience, but yeah, the performers, the actors are engaged in telling that live audience a story. And element four, theater occurs at a specific place at a specific time. Both the performers and the people who are being performed to need to know that they are watching theater, right? You know that you are watching theater, you know that you are performing theater. 
if you were to take a trip to New York and got on a subway and some angry homeless guy shouted lines from King Lear at you, that isn't theater, that is an angry homeless guy shouting lines from King Lear at you. For theater to take place, all four of those elements have to be working together at the same time. Live performance for an audience, performers performing to that audience, a story, and theater occurs at a specific place at a specific time. For all those things at once, if they are all there, that's theater. So, the thing to understand about theater is that it is a collaborative form of fine art. So for theater to be created, a bunch of different types of artists have to all work together at the same time. So unlike, say, uh, drawing or painting, right? Like, you paint a painting, you get a model, you put the paint down on the canvas, by the end of that, for the painting to be done, you do not need another artist to come in and fill it out, right? You paint a painting and you're done. But theater doesn't quite work like that. To collaborate means to work together. So yeah, theater, for it to happen, a bunch of different types of artists have to contribute together to the process to make that thing, theater, happen. So yeah, think about it this way, right? A playwright can write a script, but the script alone is not theater. The script alone is just words on a page, right? So yeah, a playwright can write a script, that isn't theater. The words on the page don't do anything until actors get up in front of a live audience and interpret those words out loud and perform it to that audience. So yeah, playwright doesn't make theater by themselves. It takes actors, directors, designers, technicians, everybody all working together at once for theater to occur. So yeah, theater is an art form that requires a bunch of different types of artists all working together at the same time to make it happen. So throughout the course of the semester, one of the things that we're gonna look at the major things that we're going to look at is to study the role of the contributors, the collaborators who create theater. So yeah, we'll look at what playwrights do and where playwrights came from and how we got to where we are now with them. I'll turn all of you into playwrights, whether you want to be or not. You're welcome. Um, actors, what actors do and how that's changed over time. Directors, what they do, where they came from and how they contribute to the process. Designers, lighting designers, sound designers set builders yeah all of those people how they work together to make theater so yeah that is what we will basically spend a lot of the semester doing looking at each of those collaborative artists what they do how we got to where we are now with them and how they contribute to the process but because context is everything we're also going to talk about some elements of theater history throughout that i think it's worthwhile for you to know to better understand how we got to where we are now because if you're following along on the slideshow, without context, you know, the slide I put up of David Tennant in Hamlet is just an emo guy looking at a skull. With context, that image is the single most famous and well-known image in all of theater in the world, not just in the English-speaking world, but the entire world. Yeah, that image of Hamlet holding the skull and, you know, saying, alas, poor Yorick. Yeah, with context, that has more weight and casts a long influential shadow, which is worthwhile to talk about. So, as we're flip-flopping from talking about one of those types of artists and what they do, we'll also look at some basic theater history topics I think you gain from knowing about. They are, uh, I put them down on the slideshow, but they're not limited to these, but here are some of them that we're going to cover. Uh, ancient Greek theater, where we all got this party started way back when. Uh, we are going to, I promise, in a minimal way, look at Mr. Shakespeare, his life, works, and legacy, because it's a theater class. You have to be kidding yourself if you thought we weren't going to talk about him, but I promise to make it as painless as possible, and you don't have to read or watch any. You just have to hear me, who is cool, talk about it and explain it and try and change your mind about it, which I probably won't. Anyway, uh, 20th century theater, which is the weirdest theater. The theater goes uh, but nutty wild weird. Musical theater, which is the one American contribution to the art form of theater. And African-American theater, stage combat. There'll be a couple of other topics that I feel like throwing in, uh, provided that they meet my whims and idiosyncrasies at the time. So yeah, we'll balance things out that way. Look at a collaborator in the art form and go back and look at the context of some of this stuff in history. So yeah, that is basically how the class is going to work. Now... If you are following along on the slideshow with me, we've hit slide 14 and there is a big glowing image of my beautiful, beautiful face right in front of you. 
uh, that is labeled the self-indulgent autobiographical section. So one of the indignities that actors are just sort of forced to have to endure in their careers is getting headshots done. Every time you go to an audition, you are handing out your headshot to people. Um, they represent you. Uh, they are how people remember you. And so, yeah, whether you like having your photo taken or not, you have to have them. So the uh, image that I included in the slideshow is my most recent headshot uh, done around 2009 when I was in New York. Um, that is the unretouched version because I can't show you the uh, Photoshop version because I would be violating the photographer's copyright should I do so. See, Photoshop. It's not just to make women feel bad about themselves in bathing suits. Yeah, actors also retouch things because you want to make yourself look as good as possible. Um, yeah, that is my most recent. Here's how the headshot process works. You sit down and then somebody takes a photo of your face for like five, six hours and you take around a thousand of them and then you pick like, you know, three. And that will follow you around as long as you have headshots. And they're expensive, too. Uh, usually, if you have somebody who knows what they're doing, it's going to set you back, you know, $600, $700, maybe $1,500 if you get a real professional in New York to do them. Um, you get what you pay for, though, so it is worth spending the money on. Anyway, the headshot I included is uh, the headshot I used when applying, uh, when auditioning for, like, you know, serious roles. Um, because look at that face. That is not the face you put in a comedy. Uh, I have a lighter hearted sort of look to me uh, with another headshot that I'm not showing you. But yeah, so I am including this section mostly just to try to convince you that I know what I'm talking about with all this. So as far as a few of the basic facts about me, I was born here in Augusta, Georgia. Um, I know I don't sound like that I was born here in Augusta, Georgia, but I was. Um, I lived most of my life here. Uh, I do not know why I do not have the dialect. My family all does. I am fairly positive that my parents dropped me on my head when I was a child and thus ensured that I do not have it. Anyway, I uh, graduated from Evans High School in 1995 before I am sure uh, the majority of you were born. I did not act in high school. Uh, I looked down upon theater people in high school because I was a member of marching band because, yeah, one group of losers for another. Anyway, uh, when I got to college, I went, after I graduated, I went to UGA, and that's when I started actually acting for the first time, uh, when I was a sophomore at UGA. Uh, since then, I have performed in 60 plus shows uh, professionally as an actor. Uh, my undergrad degree, I have a BA in English with a history minor, and then for my graduate degree, I have a uh, master of Fine Arts in Theater, specifically acting, which is it's a hoity-toity master's degree. It takes three years to get it instead of two. So yeah, I have a terminal degree in the practical performance side of theater. Can't get a higher degree in it, uh, right? I could get like a PhD in like theater history or criticism, but my student loan debt is already high enough as it is. So yeah, I'm going with the MFA. Um, additionally, here are other worthwhile things I think it's worth knowing about me. Uh, so in 2006, um, I got hired on by University of Georgia to serve as a teaching assistant for a big study abroad program that went to Thessaloniki, Greece in the summer of 2006. Um, there were like 80 students that went from, I think, three, four different schools. Most of them were 18 through 22 year olds. I, uh, there were like five classes. One of the classes was a theater class, which given that theater starts in ancient Greece, yeah, theater class is a good class for some of those students to have to do. Um, I got hired to be the teaching assistant for that class, and then additionally to be the assistant director for a show that the theater class was going to have to rehearse and perform by the end of that study abroad trip, uh, which I'll talk more about later. I mean, really, they just hired me to go and play the lead part in this play because they wanted to make sure that people were going to see it and it didn't suck, so they hired me to do that. So basically, I got to go over to Greece for a summer and teach theater and perform in front of people who had no idea what I was saying and I got paid for the whole thing. It did not suck to be me that summer. Um, later on, I served as the classical acting teacher for the MGA Theatre Academy in Edinburgh, Scotland. So basically I got to go over to Scotland for a couple of weeks and teach a bunch of Scottish musical theater kids how to perform Shakespeare. Um, 
and I will say that my trick whenever they irritated me was to stop them whatever they were doing and just make them repeat the word Macbeth over and over because they sounded so much cooler than we do when they say it. They got tired of that very quickly. I never did. I thought it was hysterical still. Um, anyway, uh, if you're following along with the slideshow, I'm on like number 17 right now. Uh, you can see an image of me gesticulating one very miserably hot night in the play Oedipus Rex uh, in August of 2006 during that uh, class's performance at the end of that trip. Um, and then slide 18 is a picture of me at the end of a very long teaching day uh, in Edinburgh, Scotland, where I was performing a one-man show that I wrote called 13. Um, yeah, uh, as I rush to assemble this class to get it ready, that expression on my face in that picture is kind of the expression I had on my face all weekend long. Yay! The biggest thing, certainly, that I have done, um, worthwhile and notable to talking about this class, is that um, I wrote a play called The Confessional in uh, 2008, in the fall of 2008, when I was in graduate school. Uh, it was a play that I wrote, directed, and acted in as a small laboratory sort of production during my third and last year of grad school, which the original production was February 2009. Um, cast had five people. The whole thing is set inside a police interrogation room. It is basically a cop trying to catch a serial killer, sort of. Anyway, um, we performed it. It went really well. We loved it. Um, thinking that nothing would come of this, one of the cast submitted this script to the New York International French Festival for the summer of 2009. And then, much to our surprise, the play was picked for a performance during mid-August at that year's Fringe Festival. Uh, the New York Fringe Festival is the largest performing arts festival on this half of planet Earth. Basically how it worked every year, thousand plus people would send script submissions in, they would pick 200 and then those 200 shows would just perform nonstop over a period of two weeks in like 20 plus different theaters all around New York City. So uh, with Confessional being picked, that makes me uh, an off-Broadway playwright, actor, and director because I directed the show, I wrote the show, and I was the lead because I'm the best actor I know. And yeah, this is going to hit the theme, theater people are egomaniacs. Yeah. So uh, we got to go to New York by the five people in uh, the four other people in my grad class. We all graduated, then we re-met back up in New York. Uh, we had some generous fundraising efforts from my grad school, and we were able to reassemble for a few weeks that August in 2009 and do the show again, which, yeah. Um, additionally, there have been two other uh, productions, two other professional productions of Confessional since. One happened uh, from a theater group in Chicago, Illinois in February, March of 2014. And then the most recent was at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland in 2016. Edinburgh is the largest performing arts festival on planet Earth uh, entirely, um, so yeah. Uh, on slide 22, you can see the uh, most recent poster version of the Edinburgh show. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I got to write a real dark, real upsetting, real scary show about real depressing, real uh, frightening things. Um, and, you know, I'm going to probably play right for it now. So, basically what I mean is, I know what I'm talking about. Alright, so, we're going to pause here, and then when we pick back up, we're going to dive into the joy that is... Greek theater.